Good evening and welcome to the Sound Off Show. My name is Linda Kirker. I host the program and thank you so much for joining us tonight. I hope you're dealing with the hot, humid weather better than I am. <laughs> but it is what it is, and that's what life's all about. We have to adjust and, and uh, accommodate the best that we can and move on and wait for the snow to fall. <laughs> um, I, before I introduce my guest, I got to thinking I had come across a short list of words that I put together that I was thinking were important to life. And, um, and then I added to it, and I thought that would be kind of fun to do, to open the show, just to share those founding, well, well, founding principles is the first one. And, uh, of course, if you know me, you know that I'm a patriot and I'm a big believer in the founding of this nation and um, all of the rights and, and um, responsibilities and opportunities that we're so fortunate to have in this country. So the foundational principles is one. And then faith. If you are not a person of faith, then I guess you're in, you can think about becoming one. <laughs> um, I know that um, I'm lifted up by my faith. And when the tough times in life come upon us, and I would say most of us don't escape some kind of hard times throughout our lives that test us. And um, I think that the more faith that you have, the, the easier it is sometimes to, to uh, get through those things. Um, and then the next one's freedom. And do you know, because we live in this great nation, we have the freedom as individuals to make a great life for ourselves. Now, it takes hard work and it takes determination and committing yourself to the task of making a great life for yourself. And, um, but the, the fact that we have the freedom to do that is a real gift. And we all need to take advantage of that. <clears throat> Excuse me. The next one is family. Now, I'm a big believer in solid families. People don't always agree with one another on every issue, but when you care about people through your family connections, then hopefully those challenges of not agreeing uh, can be conquered by being civil and kind and listening to one another with respect. The next one is financial security, which fits right in with the freedom uh, to make a life for yourself. And it's always based on commitment to yourself and to whatever it is your work is in your life. And um, then you can many times find yourself uh, over time to become financially secure. The next one is fidelity. And fidelity is to your own self. It's to the people that you love and care about. Fidelity to the country. Um, fidelity to so many things, principles of your life. And um, I feel that's really important, too. Uh, friendships is the next one. I don't know what I do without my friends these days. When your life turns around and you find yourself living alone for a lot of years, um, not that my friends were not important to me before I found myself alone in life. Uh, I don't really feel alone because I do have friends and I have, I have family as well. Um, but friendships are are critically important our friends are most often honest with us and tell us some of the things we need to hear even we don't even though we may not want to hear them at least they're being honest with us and perhaps trying to help us the next one is future we all have a future of some sort and again, it's up to us to make it the best that we can um, and appreciate and try to add 
add to whatever it's going to take to make the future of this nature, nation stronger. Almost done. Faithfulness. Being faithful to the principles of your life and of your country and of your friendships, your, your work commitment, um, I feel that's really important too. And the last one is fortitude. And that is not giving up, even though the times get troubling and tough, we have to become tough sometimes ourselves in order to get through those really hard times in life. And most of us don't uh, skip having some kind of tough times in life. And the, those times and how we work through them really say a lot about who we are. And so don't give up, folks. We have a lot of challenges right now in this nation. And a lot of them, I believe, are being manufactured to try to bring this country down. And that's where I'm going to say to you what I say just about every week. We have to stand up, speak out, get involved in our communities, and not be afraid to stand up. OK, with that, I'm <laughs> My guest is kind of grinning at me. <laughs> I can't help myself. I am who I am, and like it or leave it. <laughs> With that, I would like to introduce my guest, uh, a, fr a friend, someone I love having on the show, Mary Beerworth. Hi, Mary. Hi, Lyndon. Thank you for having me. This is always nice to be here. Well, it's always great to have you here, Mary. You're a wealth of knowledge and, and caring and information and and a lot of things we need to hear about tonight. So I'm, I'm really glad you're here. I know I'm going to learn a lot, too, from you. Um, and it's it's been a while. It little, has been a while. while. Yeah, so good to have and you back. A lot back. has happened, but uh, I'm listening to everything you just listed off, and, and so many of those things uh, reflect the pro-life movement. And, it, and also when you said fortitude, I thought about all the women who do, the young girls and women who do face an unplanned pregnancy and have the fortitude to see it through. It just made me think of them and, and the strength that it takes not to run to an abortion clinic, but to bring a baby into the world. Um, so much of what you said is all involved with the courage to do that. But anyway, I, I, it made me think to maybe say to people, when you see a, a young girl struggling with trying to bring a baby, congratulate her, stand by her, and encourage her, because that is fortitude times a million. Yes, it is. A lot of courage. It is. And... Um, Standing up for life. Um, yeah, anybody who's pro-life knows that you need fortitude to <laughs> speak out, especially these days. It, Linda, you and I were talking earlier that if you say all lives matter these days, you're considered a racist. That's so silly. It's silly, and we're going to have to stand and say it anyway. You bet. Yep. Um, and, you know, we shouldn't even have to say it <laughs> because it's just what it is. Why wouldn't a life matter? It's, it's it really as obvious and plain as the nose on your face, and um, and our founding fathers knew that. That is the, the they established the right to life in the Declaration of Independence as the first right. That's where the Vermont Right to Life Committee takes its name, because it's it. If, there's no sense in talking about liberty. There's no sense in talking about the pursuit of happiness if you haven't got. The, the, your life. Exactly. And, our, and, our, and in their wisdom, our founding fathers instinctively knew that. But they risked their lives for this country. You bet they did. Yeah. And uh, many of them paid the ultimate price. They did. And, and those who didn't stood tall. Mm -hmm. And by the way, folks, I didn't mention, in case you didn't know, uh, Mary is the executive director of Vermont Right to Life. Right. And uh, as you might expect from what we're talking about. <laughs> yes, if we didn't mention it first, it, it becomes <laughs> obvious. Uh -huh. but, but one of the things that's been so nice for me to be here, too, Linda, is that I probably had 10 uh, speaking engagements for the summer. Wow. Um, yes, but they all had to be canceled so <gasps> because of the, the coronavirus. So being here is a nice opportunity to keep people on track about um, 
the life issues. Yes, we had a lot of, uh, and, and our fair booths have been canceled, of course. All the oh, fairs are canceled. Sure, so those sure. were opportunities to reach out and remind people that life is precious and you need to stay on track and on target. Um, so, so thank you again that I oh, can be here. Oh, you're most welcome. It's a delight. And, you know, this, these challenges that we're having mm -hmm. now, with the coronavirus and the uprisings and the destruction of private and public property mm -hmm. and and you know long time statues that represent uh, different time frames in mm -hmm. our nation mm -hmm. and our nation's history um, they're all challenges and you know people out of work and worrying about school for the kids and all these things a lot of stressors there are a lot of people under a lot of stress right now and mm -hmm. so it's also though i try to look at the positive mm -hmm. and it also is a time for us to reflect mm -hmm. and to start to maybe analyze what is really important mm -hmm for our country and for our personal lives and our families and so forth. Um, I, I want to think that some good has to come from this whole shenanigan of, of the, uh, the virus, how sad that people have died from that. And, mm -hmm. and now people are killing others, you know, in the streets and it, it's just sickening. Mm -hmm. And I think it's wonderful that you came up with that list and that it includes family and faith and fortitude and those really important principles in life um, that, that we can get back to remembering what's important. Yes. And, and I think some of that is happening, but still, I think the stress, I think young mothers are under stress. They, uh, men who have to stay home and try to work with kids running around the house, just a really flipped life upside down. Yes, you know what you know what I did. One positive for me. Um, oh, it was about a month or so ago. There are, are three homes down below mine mm -hmm. on on the our same road, and um, two of them have small children. <clears throat> they each have two small children, and so I was going through some things in the basement, and I had this big um, plastic bucket with my grandson's oh. toys, mm -hmm. building blocks and books and all kinds oh, of things, cars, little cars. So I gathered them up and I divided them up and I, oh, one was a phonics book. Wonderful. Teaching mm -hmm. this uh, for the little bit older children, teaching them to read through phonics, which is the only way to the go, way, yeah. even though they're not doing it today in school, as far as I know. But um, they were so excited. Oh, I'm sure they were. And it made me feel good, too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I kind of started to empty my basement a there little bit. There you go. <laughs> of course, don't tell my grandson because he wants to start having a family. And <laughs> we might be buying I'll some new to, stuff. <laughs> well, maybe by then th these children will have grown beyond okay. and I can get those things back. <laughs> anyway. What a nice idea. Well, you know what? It make I, I have this philosophy, and then I'll stop and let you talk. Um, I believe that when you do something kind, nice for someone else, mm -hmm. that you're helping both of you. Because the, the recipient of your kindness is hopefully in appreciating and enjoying it. But at the same time, you feel good about right. yourself. So it's a positive on both ends. It is. So do something nice for somebody, folks. And, and a young mother at home or an older person, uh, you know, trapped inside. Uh, it's, really, it's really tough. My mother is in a nursing home, and we're not allowed to come in and visit. Oh, now. how yeah, no. hard is that? And it's really hard. Uh, we, even tr we even are not allowed to stand outside of a screened-in porch. We have to wear our masks. Well, she has dementia, so she doesn't understand who we are. Oh, even. gosh. So that's been a long, lonely stretch. Boy, yeah. that's tough. It is. But that's... these... These are all pro-life things to do, really. Yes, yeah. yeah. Affirming. So life. tell me, or tell the audience, um, about some of the things relative to the pro-life organization and, and the great support for life in general. Um, what are some of the things that are going on that are either positive or negative? Well, there, I'd like to send out a little warning um, 
the legislature has just obviously gone completely they, a tilt a world to the left. Uh, the last session was a was a disaster. 2019, they made abortion the centerpiece of the legislative agenda. They passed H57, which is now Act 47. Anyone can take a, a look at that, and they will understand without confusion that Vermont s sanctioned abortion. Uh, unrestricted, unregulated abortion throughout all nine months of pregnancy, and it is it inherently is a business protection bill for Planned Parenthood, the largest provider of abortions in our state. They re will remain completely unregulated by the state. And sadly, our governor um, uh, decided to endorse that by signing that measure, which he didn't have to do. It was going to go into law even without his signature because of the overwhelming majority of Democrats and progressives that now make up our House and Senate. That it was very tilted to the left. There were hard, uh, uh, of ten solid proposals of amendment, all of them were rejected. Things like notifying a parent, requiring <laughs> inspections of clinics for health and safety. Uh, putting a, a firm limit on how late abortions could be performed in pregnancy, all of them rejected out of hand. And then they went further, and some of you already know this, and it's all contained in our latest newsletter. You can find that online now. Um, our newsletter can be read at www.vrlc.net. Just click on review, you'll see it, and it'll open up by pages. The we will have face an ongoing battle of propo on Proposal 5, which is a proposal to amend the Vermont Constitution, our founding document, our historical document, with language to enshrine abortion, unlimited, unregulated abortion, into our Constitution. You, uh, it, <laughs> I just have no idea what th this, these legislators were thinking of. Well, I wonder uh, what's behind their decision making, but um, when you mentioned um, that parents couldn't be notified mm -hmm. if a young girl becomes pregnant, so, and I've said this before way, way in the past, um, when I was sat on the Health and Welfare mm -hmm. Committee, actually, um, a young girl gets pregnant. Nobody tells her mother mm -hmm. or father. Or father. Um, and then she goes and has an abortion. The parents have no idea. Mm -hmm. And then they're trying to figure out why she's so depressed and you know, uh, just unhappy and not interested in anything, and they have no clue. Mm -hmm. And and that is the case. That is the case right now in Vermont. They rejected parental notification, which um, nearly every state in the United States has. Um, and if this language to enshrine abortion gets into our Constitution, I don't think we ever will be able to pass such a law. And I thought I would read you the language. Go ahead. Um, so they did a lot of running around. They, they spent a whole summer working on the language outside of the legislative process and in conjunction with our attorney general's office to come up with the language. And then they changed it and changed it and changed it. They changed it right up until a half an hour before it was put on the calendar. And because there was a lot of problems with it, and every time we pointed out another problem, they quickly changed it. So they came up with this. Now, it, you're not going to hear the word abortion in this, even though the ACLU, Vermont Right to Life, the Attorney General's Office, and Legislative Council all said, you should be clear in your language. And if it's abortion you want to put into this amendment, it should have the word abortion, either in the purpose or in the actual Stand language. Stand up. And they, refu they re declined to do that. So here's this convoluted language that will, I unless we can vote this down, and that they will vote on it one more time in the state house, and then it will be vote on the ballot for you, the voter, to vote yes or no in in 2022, the general election of 2022. So listen to this, and I, it really won't make sense. Okay. <laughs> that an individual's right to personal reproductive autonomy is central to the liberty and dignity to determine one's own life course, and shall be not be denied or infringed unless justified by a compelling state interest 
interest achieved by the least restrictive means. And every time we inquired about what that would mean, the answer came back, the courts will decide. Oh, lovely. So personal reproductive autonomy definitely includes unlimited, unregulated abortion. But what else does it mean? Why didn't they choose to put the word abortion in? Now we see on Planned Parenthood's Facebook page that transgender rights are personal reproductive autonomy. Sterilization is personal reproductive autonomy. Is prostitution re personal reproductive autonomy? The courts will decide. So there's no age, there's no discussion of age here. This is an individual's right. So can a 12-year-old decide I want to be sterilized? Um, the courts will decide. It's a very, very dangerous one sentence that they want to enshrine in our Constitution. And Linda, the process is so lengthy and so convoluted that if, if it goes in, it's unlikely to be able to ever come out. So when they say the courts will decide, does that mean the Supreme Court will deal with this, or does that could, mean could, on an individual basis? On an individual basis, and then you can challenge and challenge and maybe wind up at the Supreme Court level, yeah. Well, the, the right, or whatever they call it, for uh, one to determine one's own life course, what about that fetus, that baby that's inside of that girl? Good question. What about that? Life what about course. that individual life, right? Right. You know, Mary, <clears throat> uh, well, there's another topic that I'd like to throw in here. And that is, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that you, Right to Life, has not been able to get into the schools to speak right. with the children, right? right? But Planned Parenthood does get in there. Mm -hmm. And there's some very problematic wording in H57, now Act 47, which restrains public entities from pretty much from pro-life speech. So we're going to be testing the water on that. But it may very well be that those who work in, for the schools or governments can't, can't speak on pro-life issues. We will see. Take a look at the language of the bill. It, it restrains public entities. Act 47. Act 47. Folks, look that up. Vermont legislatures. Yep. We testified. That's a House bill, right? That, that was a House bill. Um, uh, but now it's Act 47, now that the governor has signed it in, it's law. So, I, so all of this was promoted. All of this was promoted by the largest providers of abortion in the state of Vermont, the United States of America, and in the world. And that is Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. They're involved in population control in other countries. Mm -hmm. They have a very checkered past. Their founder, Margaret Sanger, was a eugenicist, a racist eugenicist. They never have apologized for her. There's a huge controversy today in New York, Greater Plains, New York, Planned Parenthood, oh no, New York City's Planned Parenthood, they have just decided to denounce Margaret Sanger and take her name off the uh, clinic wall. And why would that be? It because it doesn't Because of look the Black good? Lives Matter movement, yes. <laughs> and of course, Planned Parenthood wants to be part of the Black Lives Matter movement. They've called for defunding the police and, and they want to work for racial justice, but they, here in Vermont, they have never apologized for Margaret Sanger. And, and they have very close ties to Margaret Sanger, right directly in Vermont, so. Well, I still have not gotten over the fact that the Medical Center mm -hmm. Hospital in, mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. Burlington has an abortion clinic there. They have an abortion clinic there. And there's a big to-do over nurses being forced to participate in abortions mm -hmm. uh, when they're called upon to do so. They should be able well, first of all, they ought to get the whole thing right out of the hospital. It should, it should never belong in, in the same surgical center where babies are being born, where people are having knee surgeries. They are they're life using saving, life saving procedures and healing. Exactly right. it, and, I we, told and we have some new numbers. They, the numbers of later term abortions have gone up dramatically, and the numbers of abortions at the hospital have more than tripled. So no. they, in 2015, they did about 33 abortions a year, which they claimed were medically necessary. Now that number is up to, I think, 122 for the last year of the stats, which is 2018. And that's probably going to see a steady increase. Yeah, And then those involve some of those later term abortions. So this gets back to um, a fundamental 
Oh, I should have put that on my list. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that is, what are young people being taught about making wise decisions in your life? Now, I grew up in a time, Mary, where it would be rare even for a young couple to have sex. Be Out of marriage, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah I'm talking school mm -hmm. kids. Right. High school. That's not rare anymore. No, but I knew that was a no-no. In fact, I never even knew anything about it. <laughs> uh, that's how naive I was. Well, you were having a young person's life. You were not. Uh, yes. This is a terrible trap to fall into too young. It's something that is, you know, it's beyond their, the the maturity development portion of your brain that helps you make good judgments doesn't set in until you're in your early 20s. Right. And so now we're facing, and one of the pieces of legislation that I want to warn your audience about has already passed the House, and when the legislature goes back in August, is likely to pass the Senate. And that is allowing contraceptives, big bowls of condoms in the nurse's office for kids as young as the sixth grade. Oh, boy. And so this is too much for kids. This is too much. And how do we know that there isn't abuse going on? There are some schools that are sixth grade all the way, or seventh or eighth grade all the way through to uh, senior in high school. What, are, are we not going to protect some of these young kids from too early? And the other thing people need to know is that Planned Parenthood, had, Planned Parenthood with their very risky sex education programs, they, they make a joke out of abstinence. and and offer contraceptives to the really youngest of teens. And they are in the schools on a regular basis. They have these peer educator um, situations. Ask your kids about them. They're definitely in Burlington High School. They're in South Burlington High School. Peer and educators? Peer educators. And so they train these young kids to speak to other young kids oh. about going to Planned Parenthood and getting your contraceptives and getting sexually, in, if you're sex, encouraging sexual activity. There's no other way to say it. So they so, train them? Yeah, they train other, they, they select out young kids that they think are popular or whatever, and then they set up a table, often in the cafeteria around lunchtime, and then they can share all this information with kids. So it's, it's like a feeder program for Planned Parenthood. And, and they just never stop. They never stop. They're relentless. They have so much money, which is another thing I'd like to touch upon. But, sure. but you're not going to hear it. Your kids aren't going to come home and remember to tell you that. You need to be asking them. And certainly if they are asked by Planned Parenthood to be a peer educator, please step in and don't let them become one. But you, the money is tremendous. This, this is money that you can't them? fight. The, so... On top of H-57 and Proposal 5, Planned Parenthood decided to reject the federal Title X funding from the Trump administration. Now, they, that's about $800,000 a year. And they demanded it out of our state taxes. And they got it. The, the Scott administration Who gave them it? Planned Parenthood. Well, well, what power do they have? They own the state. I, I, I need to be very clear. They have taken over the state house. They have the kind of money at election time that works inside the state house. Oh, I believe that. And and so then Phil Scott just helped them get more of our money. Now they were already getting 1.2 million dollars a year. So now, no, let's see. They, the, their total now for 2019 is 1.4 million dollars in, in, in Vermont, just for the little state of Vermont. To That's give it to pathetic. When they got that money, they immediately moved a million dollars into their political fund. They're far more about politics than they are about health care. So they can, and they sent a threatening letter to legislators on the floor over the vote on H-57 that was a very threatening in tone. Representative Jim Harrison, who's an independent, said he was deeply offended. They said in the letter, we'll be scoring you on every vote, on every amendment, and unless you know you're 100%, you you will be using that in the next election. Um, so that's the kind of a big stick they carry at the state house. Now you know, Linda, too, that Lucy LaRiche is their lobbyist. She used to be the speaker of the the house. No, she was majority yeah. leader. Yeah. Majority leader. Yeah. So she knows all the players. The Democrats. Yeah. Yeah, she knows all the players. And then. 
the woman who had her job, Jill Krawinski at Planned Parenthood, is now majority leader in the mm -hmm. House. So this is a, a, a situation that is so the intertwined toys. and, yes, connected. And so they... And I'll go one step further. There's an organization called Emerge Vermont, and they have unbelievable funding. And they look for female candidates. The one thing you have to be is 100% pro-abortion. They will train you in a six-week training camp. They will make sure you have money to run for office, and they're having you run from everything from dog catcher all the way up to House and Senate. And so nearly 36 new candidates in the State House uh, took the Emerge program. And they have another whole boatload running this time. And some of their names will be familiar to you. Um, I, I, in our newsletter, if you go online, you will find our, the list of the 2020 candidates. I'm, I'm it, it's, we're, overwhelmed, we're overrun and overwhelmed. Um, and, and they come to the State House with some really bad ideas. But they all come wedded to the pro-abortion movement. So we are, have a dwindling number of those who defend life and an increasing number of those who, are, who want one bad idea after another to this pass. This is just it's very stunning. Well, I have more. Oh, no. <laughs> so at, when they get back in August, we fully expect there were two bills introduced this time in the legislature concerning prostitution. One was to fully legalize prostitution in Vermont. And we were admonished. You couldn't say prostitution. You needed to use the phrase sex workers. That was the new politically correct word. So they, so a shockwave went through the state house. Legalizing prostitution seemed like kind of too much. So they start, and this is something you know, they start with a study bill. So uh, in August, we expect that now. It's passed the House, and we expect it to pass the Senate. And that study committee will spend the summer months um, or the rest of the summer or the fall studying whether or not prostitution should be legalized. Well, the members of the committee and the makeup will guarantee that the word will come back oh, that's sure. a great idea. So I want people to stop and think about what that means. It, it makes no sense in light of their pretense that they're opposed to human trafficking there is not such a thing as willing prostitutes. They maybe start out that way, but that's not how they end up. Mm -hmm. it's this cl it will be as close to human trafficking as anyone can imagine. They hook you on drugs. They get you into a lifestyle. They won't let you leave. Mm -hmm. So please don't glamorize it. They want it to seem like Pretty Woman or one of those movies. It's not a glamorous lifestyle. and. Um, I'm, I'm bringing those up in light of Vermont Right to Life, the contraception bill and the um, prostitution bill, because I think those two have a direct impact on the number of abortions that will occur. And the number of abortions will go up under both of those scenarios. We have successfully been dropping that number of abortions over all the years. We have uh, decreased abortion from the 1980s at 3,500 babies a year dying by, in abortion clinics down to 1,204 in 2018. Now, that's still a lot, but it's a big drop. And I really don't want to see girls and women get into these situations. Um, and they will not be of their own free will. It's absolutely blind craziness to even come up with the idea. So a legislature charged, as you were charged, with supporting Vermonters, taking care of our roads and bridges, making sure hospitals were stable, and all those women has turned into a... A mess. It's a mess. They're taking up any notion they have. A disaster and, and making it law. And it's all about destructive things, it is. negative things, unhealthy things. Unhealthy things, yeah. Not only for the individuals involved, but for the state. It's been shocking, and, you, and year after year, I think, OK, this is the worst it's going to get, and it keeps getting worse, and it keeps getting worse. Well, folks, you know what? If it's not too late, why don't you start running for office if you have faith and principles yes, and some please. of the things I was talking about <laughs> earlier? We need some solid people with, with values and principles running for office in this well, state. It's time to and turn Interestingly it. enough, uh, there's a last-minute surge of people getting their name, running write-in ballots uh, for the primary. So the August 11th is the primary. Um, you can... It, it, 
stand outside the polling booth and just put your name on a card, hand it to people, write, write you in if there's no one running. Make sure no one's running, though. <laughs> there's some really good people running for office. And we don't want to, just don't go willy-nilly, but yeah. uh, find out if there's no one on your ballot running against some of these crazy ideas. And uh, This makes me sick. It's horrible. It's it horrible. really is. I cannot see one bit of positivity in this. And you know what? You know what I'm thinking. It's a national agenda from some of the far, far left. It it intertwines with Planned Parenthood always. I would. I'm. I, they have not come out and supported legalizing prostitution yet, but I feel very sure they will. This is. They've become a dominant force in the state house. I'm so dismayed we allowed them to have more money. I would like to go back to the money for Do a the second. Do the people even realize that? Okay, I don't think folks, people realize that. $1.4 million. Out of our state. Uh, state dollars going to Planned Parenthood to foster abortion and more. So the 800000 that was with the Title X program, they've been taking that for years, okay? But with the, under the Trump administration, he actually wants to start, I want to enforce the rules. And the rules for the Title X money, that's a contraception, that's a family planning contraception program, okay? Was to be separate from abortion. In other words, the purpose of the Title X money was never to allow abortion to be used as a method of family planning. So you needed to keep the two things separate. Well, Planned Parenthood refuses to separate the services, and in fact, they do consider abortion just another method of family planning. So they rejected the Title X money and demanded it out of our state coffers so that they would not have to change anything about the way they do business. They demand it. Yeah, well, there's a lot of cooperation for Planned Parenthood for, with our health well, department. Well, there's money that comes into candidates, right? Well, that's a separate fund. They do raise that somewhat separately, although they did move a million into one account. But so here, here's what you need to know. There's a real connection between our health department and Planned Parenthood, and there always has been. You work for Planned Parenthood, you're going to likely can get a job at the health department eventually. Yes, they're very close like this. So it was a, so Scott's budget included a recommend from the health department to give the money to Planned Parenthood, and he, and he allowed it. So. So, um, and, the, and the same thing happened with, so it's Planned Parenthood of Northern New England. They got money out of both New Hampshire and Maine. So they do not have to obey the Title X rules. So this is... Tell me again, what's the Title X? Title X is a family planning program that got put in place about 1976. And that was to ensure that low-income, young girls, young boys could find, get access to lower cost or free contraception. But they were not to use it, abortion as a, it says very clearly, it, there's a line, abortion is not a method of family planning. Well, when Planned Parenthood testifies at the State House, they absolutely consider abortion a method of family planning. So they've separated themselves from those rules so they can use the money the, any way they want. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm amazed that you're not totally depressed. <laughs> <laughs> well, as I told you before, we see the numbers of abortions going down, and those, that's, where, <clears throat> that's where our eyes go. My first thoughts are, it is time for private schools mm -hmm. uh, to be paid for in, like, if, if, you, if I have a child, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, and I take that child out of the public school and put that child in the private school mm -hmm. or a charter school, whatever, right. then the money that was going to the public school right. has to follow my child. Okay, that's... We have a better shot at that these days because there was a Supreme Court case that said what was very recently was affirming school choice. Well, if the schools don't start standing up and doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. uh, condoms in the nurse's office, mm -hmm. and you can't 
Planned Parent, uh, excuse me, Vermont Right to Life cannot get into the schools, but Planned Parenthood can. Well, uh, and we need to try again and test that out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. I'll go with you. All right. <laughs> I'll take you. <laughs> we have to start being real. Yeah. Th this is not fair to the, the students even. Now it's sad, and the students are coming out so thinking so monolithically about you know how much of how much of Planned Parenthood. It's all about sex. Everything's about sex. It is. And they encourage young people to have sex so then they can do abortions and fund themselves. It's a, it's a revolving door. Well, and if they were privately funded, that would level the playing field. So calling for defunding Planned Parenthood will be the first thing we get to when we have a few more seats than we have now. It's nothing that would go anywhere uh, where we are at today. But... Um, Anyway, find out more about it. I really encourage people to go to our <coughs> website. It's uh, vrlc.net, or just look up Vermont Right to Life. And there's article after article on uh, everything I'm saying, and it's probably more, con more concisely written than I'm saying. I would guess that many parents of these middle school students have no clue have no that children are being offered condoms and <clears throat> Excuse me. That Planned Parenthood gets into the schools and trains peers. They they have always, always, always been in our schools for decades now. They've always been behind whatever sex education has been taught to the kids. Now, once upon a time, we could really fight them because it would say Planned Parenthood in Northern New England on all the stuff, and we could point to what was kind of inappropriate, age inappropriate, whatever you know. Um, now they just educate the educators. So uh, it's hard to, and they make sure there's hardly any paper. You just talk. No trail. That's yeah. right. But how about if they, are, they focus on reading and writing and math? <laughs> and how about a little US history, folks, which when I talk to young people, and I've been talking with quite a few high school students lately, they're not being taught US they're not. history. No. Nope. So how are they going to no stand civics. up? No civics. To um, protect the rights and the opportunities and the freedoms that we have in this country. It's all planned out. They don't want these young people because they're the future. And if the young people are not taught how valuable all of those principles are, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, the Bill of Rights, are so critically important to th them having a productive life and a free life. It's pretty far away from that. It's, it's all politically correctness. Well, I, it's, look. Maybe it's a good thing the schools are closed. <laughs> yeah, that's, I've thought of that, too. Um, I think we need to encourage some people to open up some private schools and then have the legislature pass a bill that the money follows the student. Yeah, it's and we're and dollars. we're a long way because you know, I, and so so not to lead anyone in the audience into thinking that Planned Parenthood's the only heavy hammer down in the state house. The NEA has a grip on them. The unions have a grip. Uh, they there's a left leaning lot of money, lot of money from all those folks. You line up your voting record with those four or five groups, and you will win again because the money that will come in for your campaign will be phenomenal. Well, we need the voices of the people to outrun the money game. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why I do this show, folks, because I, I feel it's so critically important for all of us to have this information and to protect our children from these forces that are maligning their lives and... Um, encouraging them in, in about sex and so forth when they need to be focusing on the Constitution. <laughs> and, and, you, and, and there's this whole notion of gender confusion that is just oh. running rampant through the schools. Um, interestingly enough, Planned Parenthood said <laughs> transgenderism begins in the womb. <laughs> so they don't even hear themselves speaking. <laughs> well, and 
We have transgenders in libraries speaking with little children, men dressed in women's garb. Confu it's confusing for... for they don't kids. know any better. These are young minds. I know. Parents need to keep their kids away from these forces that are destructive to their child's lives. Well, you know, I, I don't know what to tell you, but the medical center came down and testified that transgender surgery is medically necessary. So there's, there's just... Uh, it's sad. And uh, there's, yeah, there's group think going on right now. Um, and so it's so easy to just say, I'm pro-choice, I'm this, I'm that, I'm for all Black Lives Matter, because it, the, the atmosphere has become so toxic for any free thinking. Um, and so I bring that up only because we need to be able to, to get our voices heard. Yeah, I mean, lives depend on it. Yes, mm -hmm. and sometimes dissension is a positive. Yeah. But, it, but it's pretty scary for uh, a young kid or a young family to be able to. They're indoctrinated. They're being indoctrinated. They just probably, some of them say, keep your head down till you get out of school. I, this is not what my parents tell me at home, but I, I, I can't handle all. I mean, well, how do you handle all that? Yeah, it's too much with their peers. And, mm -hmm. and oh, we have a caller. Thank you, caller. What do you have to say? Hey, my name is Richard Pepin. Oh, hey. How are you, Richard? Hi, Richard. What's on your mind? Can you Boy, hear it's pretty noisy right there. Can, no, I, what's all that noise in the background? Anyhow. Is, wait, is that at your house? I want to talk about uh, this guy that owns... Uh, Good stuff. It's a really bad place. Can you tell him to turn his TV? Can you turn? He has one in San Albans. Excuse me. Can you turn your TV down? He has one in Waterbury Center. I know what he's talking about. And, he, and let's see, there's another one. And what is what? It, it's, I don't know where the other one. Yeah, is. I think it's it's kind yes, of like three of them. Died. Oh, Stowe. Yeah, I think on Stowe. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think I know what you I mean, can't hear. Richard. I can't hear. Thank you. I think I know what you mean. No, we're hearing a reverberation of your voice. Why don't you tell me? Yeah, we'll we will talk about this topic. You can't, can't, you can't, yeah, but all that noise, you can't even hear you. That's better. That noise is gone now. But he might be gone. Too. Are you still there? I think he's gone. I I guess we lost him too. Oh yeah. Okay. So. Do you know what he's talking yeah, about? Yes, the good stuff sh uh, shops are. They've what are got, they called? They're good stuff. The good stuff, I think it's called, or else it's just good stuff. I've never heard There's of that. There's always the windows are all, you can't see in, and it's it's got some very raunchy porn sort of stuff. Oh, that they for sell. heaven's sakes! Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I hope they don't let young people in there. I don't know about that. It might be you have to be 18, I, but I'm not sure. I've never been in one. <laughs> so. Oh, Mary. <laughs> that makes two of us. <laughs> I'm too busy living life. <laughs> oh, gosh. Well, um, did you want to speak to um, any anything else about... Uh, no, just, just to make sure the, the, that I understand what he was trying to say, and that is that um, it's one more corrupting influence on our children. And, and, and that's, it's, I'm grateful that he called in because I bet people drive past that store and have absolutely no, no idea. No idea what it is. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. the windows are blocked yep. or whatever. Well, we have a lot of work to do. Parents have a great it's deal a of work job. to do to uh, give their children a perspective that runs counter to a lot of things that the children are being exposed to in the school system. It makes me sick to my stomach. I know. We're paying so much for education in this state. It's unbelievable. When I was growing up, my mother always taught us we were people of faith, and she said, you will run, everything that happens, you will run counter to the culture of the day. 
And so, but kids are not prepared for that. No. People have, the truth is, is never going to be the exalted thing for a child. The, I mean, I mean, we didn't have anything like what's going on out there right now, mm -mm. but still, I, it's a good thing to prepare your kids. That, oh, absolutely. That the way to the path to a good life runs counter to what you're being told. I mean, the the lure of sex and drugs and um, free things. I mean, it's just. Un oh yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I was in a store in in St. Albans not long ago, and I being who I am, was talking with two young people who were working behind the counter. And um, we were talking about political things, mm -hmm. of course. <laughs> <laughs> Can't help myself. And um, the, young, the woman w uh, was a little bit older than the, the young man. Um, but she, we were talking about Bernie Sanders and all kinds of stuff. And she said, well, I sure, what was it she agreed, uh, she agreed with? Um, oh, free education. And I said, you know, uh, who's going to pay for that? And I said, let me tell you one more thing. The more that government does for you, the more control government has over your life. And we have another caller. So, caller, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? I'm calling. Yes. Because they, they, your sound is off, so you can't hear me. I can hear you. Can you hear me? So I'm, I, I encourage that. I don't know what's going on. Can, can Put in we? some good Republicans yep. in office. Pro life. Amen to that. Can you hear me? Anyhow, that's my sound off today. Thank you. <laughs> that's a good one. Thanks. Thank you. And, and I found that, actually. Wanna Why can't play we play on that him? a little bit? Um, I think we can hear him. He can't hear us. But to, to just play off on Richard's comment, um, I have found that when you support a pro-life candidate, when they can understand that fundamental, one of the words you were just using, that fundamental premise that life is precious and we should do what we can and everything in our power to protect it, to support women, to get a, a good, when we, when they can think with and, and have the courage to run as a pro-life candidate, they will be right on all of the issues or at least 99% of them because they have that fundamental understanding of government, of life, of the issues that matter and they're brave. So um, it, it, it is a question that we do ask. We have a political committee, Vermont Right to Life, if you're on our mailing list. We have, we, uh, that's a separate organization, although it's connected to us. And there is a team of uh, pro-life volunteers who go through and survey all of the candidates and come up with our best recommendations for you to support in both the primary, which is August 11th, and the general election in November. Yes, folks. Um, this voting system uh, scares the living, <laughs> what I want to say, <laughs> daylights. Daylight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the living daylights out of me because I, I heard of one, one family that got seven postcards. There are only two of them living there. Right. And the other postcards were for people who had priv previously lived in that home. So... That tells us that there's a big problem. There's a problem. And who's going to take those postcards and try to use them? I don't know. You know, Linda, I deal with mailing lists. We have an extensive mailing list at Vermont Right to oh, Life. Excuse me, Mary. Yep. We have another caller. Welcome to the show, caller. Hi, uh, Linda. Can you hear me? I can. <laughs> can you hear me? Okay. Uh, I just want to let everybody know that right after your show on Vermont Public Television, tonight you're going to listen to the candidates running for governor in Vermont for the Republican Party. Oh, for the Republican Party. Uh, yeah. Nine o'clock. And then on Thursday at the same time on uh, PBS, they're going to have uh, the Democratic candidates for governor. So you said nine o'clock tonight? 
She's not hearing me. Yeah, that's what the problem is. Yeah, I'm not. Sure I can't but... hear you on the phone. Huh? Um, just a second. What did she ask, Hank? Can, can you, you hear, hear me? me? Eight o'clock. It's at eight o'clock. Eight o'clock. Well, that's good to know. And whoa, now I'm reverberating <laughs> all over the world. <laughs> the phones uh -huh. aren't with us tonight. Uh, um. I hope my voice is... Okay, bye-bye. Thank you, Louise. Uh, I hope my voice is carried to the viewers for the rest of the show, or I'd really be upset. Um, I tried to share some good stuff. I think they're hearing us through the program. It's the phone. Yeah. Um, so, um, folks, be sure to tune in tonight on PBS, right? Public I think she said Vermont Public Radio. I, oh, radio. I could, be wrong. I could be wrong. Wait. I want to see it on TV. I want to see them. I might have that wrong. Um, well, she might have said VPR. What channel is that? 620? Let me just take a look. I don't know. But, folks, uh, tune in. Whatever we're, We'll try to clarify whether it's Vermont Public Radio or PBS, PBS, Public Broadcasting TV. Is there is there a channel out this way for that? It's either 22 or 33. I can never remember. Um, but I'd like to hear what they all have to say. Yes. And by the way, folks, we're, we only have about three and a half minutes left. I want to be sure to... Uh, let you know that um, one of the Republican candidates for uh, governorship, uh, John Clark, is going to be uh, in St. Albans, n not this Friday, but the following Friday, the 31st of July, at 4.30 in the afternoon um, at the, um, what do you call that? The park in St. Albans? Uh, yeah, Taylor at park? Taylor Park yep. by the gazebo. So, and, and so I hope you'll be there to just learn who he is and what he has to say, and then you can decide from there how you want to vote. And do get your information before you vote. This push for early voting, um, I've had several people call me very upset because they cast their ballot early and they didn't have the information they needed. There isn't any real rush. You can vote right up until August 11th. So this is very confusing. The VPR Vermont PBS debates air, uh, and you'll be able to hear them from what I'm looking at on Vermont Public Radio. Is that 620 or 550? Uh, I don't get 550. So that's not, neither one of those are the channel. I haven't, I think it's 107.9. Oh, that uh, would... But you can also go to VPR on your uh, device and listen to it live. On my computer? Yes. Okay. Um, well, we're down to two minutes, so any, um, any really important... It's Vermont PBS, 8 o'clock, yeah. Public can, broadcasting? Oh, good. Then that's TV. Well, they're saying you can also listen to it on okay, Vermont maybe Public it's Radio. Both. both. Okay, yeah. I'll have to, uh, I'll write that down. So. Yeah, that was nice that Louise called in. Yes, that was very nice. So people, we could let folks know. Mm -hmm. um, it's really important that you hear what the various candidates have to say, because your vote is really important. It really is. I'm going in. I'm going in with my mask on to vote. Yeah, me too. I'm not using this postcard thing. I think it's a, a mess. Mary, we have just over a minute. Um, I want to thank you so much oh, for I'm coming Oh, I'm so happy in. to be here. So enlightening, all the things that are going on that I'm not happy about. <laughs> well, we're going to, you know, we stand in place and we tell the truth, and that's what we can do, and eventually things will shift. It, it, it's, we have to expose, and then things will That's turn. true, and we have to fight back. Mm -hmm. And uh, let me know when something's going on. If mm -hmm. I can be there, I'll be there to be supportive. Sounds great. Okay. Well, we, we still have about 45 seconds. So. I was going to just throw out there that I deal with mailing lists all the time, speaking of the mail-in voting, and, and we send their mailing list out for upgrades and, you know, cleaning and legislative redistricting, and still mail does not land properly. So... I don't understand the whole. Be careful. Make sure your vote counts and make sure you find out who the candidates are before you do. Absolutely. 
um, because you will be doing yourself and the candidates yeah. a favor. Right. And the state of Vermont, the people of Vermont, um, really be sure you vote. Be sure you're registered to vote in the first place. Mm -hmm. And um, do your duty as a citizen. Okay, we're done, folks, for tonight. I have a great guest next week, somebody who's never been on before with a fascinating topic of the day. So please tune in. Good night.